Hello there, everybody. Welcome back. Today I will be drafting. However, the whole premise of the video is not based around the draft. That is just for fun, I guess. So we're gonna do a bit of a speed draft, as I've done before. But the real challenge of this video is that every time our team gets a shutout, our highest overall player has gotta go. And you know what? To make it harder on myself, I'm gonna say that I can't use draft picks and I cannot use prospects. I can, however, make a package deal. So I have to trade the highest overall player, but I could also include some other players on the team and try to get some sort of big deal going. Let's go ahead, randomize the team. We get the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's actually me best mate's favorite team. I know he loved NHL 06 as well, so I wonder if he liked them before Le Cavalier was on the cover of 06 or if that's sort of the time that he was like, you know what? I think I'm a lightning fan. I'm gonna say we get draft pick number 13. I don't know where I pull these numbers from. Basically just randomly generate in my head. We get number 28. That is not phenomenal. I would like to redact my previous statement and draft Jason Robertson. I could play Seb in the middle. Our first line would be unreal. Let's make it happen. I'm already forgetting about the stipulation of the video, so these players aren't gonna be there concretely. In fact, quite the opposite. I would go as far as to say there's a good chance they're gone. I guess it depends on what trades I make as well, because if I trade for a player that's the same overall, then that player will go next time we get a shutout, you know? Should probably really consider taking some defensemen here. Our first line and our first defensive pair are gonna be unreal. After that gets a little iffy. This really is a speed draft. I am flying through this thing. I'm not even really taking time to consider. It's just the first player that grabs my attention. You're hired. There's our squad. I have a pretty good feeling about this team. All right, here we go. Krejci, 84 overall on the third line. I bet you he puts up like 73 points. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, that first defensive pair gets along great. First line gets along great. We have a very solid second line as well. What happens if I do this? Nothing. Hmm. Now, what can I do about you two? If I do that, it's still a dash two. It's roll all pairings. Hmm, that is tempting, but Gosses Bear is 85 overall. Nope, you're staying. However, on our first shutout, could maybe package a deal with Jason Robertson, pick up another left winger, and also send one of these two away for another D-man. That's probably a two-way defender. In net, we have Katahat. Let's see how many shutouts he can get for us. And we also have the roll four lines allocation this time, and I am totally okay with that. Let the games begin. Why do I feel like this is gonna happen way more than I thought it would? Connor Sheary leading the team with two points after one game, a boy. 90 overall J-Rob, you gotta go. And then I'll get rid of Savard or McNabb, depending on what kind of defenseman the target team has, because they're basically the same player. One's making a bit more, but one's left-handed and one's right-handed. The Yotes do want Robertson. They're one and oh, have a ton of cap space. And they have no, oh, this is only defenseman. Okay, I was scared for a second there. They do have pointer. Making 9.5. Guy's got a couple abilities in there somewhere. The trade value looks very even. I know that Braden Point is one overall lower, but I don't think that would make that much of a difference. We'll, we'll continue shopping around, okay? Don't get me wrong, I'm just saying this is an option. Jack Eichel making 10 milli, but again, the value is quite even. Who's our centerman again? Sebastian. Yeah, that's not happening. See, now this might work. I know that Forsberg is 89 overall as well. It's got a few abilities, but Gavrikov, 83 overall coming back for Savard, it's pretty good. And it's fairly even in value, definitely considering this one. The only concern I have with that trade is that Forsberg is not a sniper. This trade would have been fire, but we would have just, you know, ended up trading Ovi anyway, so. We could do something like this, although Bouchard is right-handed, so I would get rid of Savard instead, but I don't know, the Detroit one seems to be the most tempting. I can't get too caught up in these trades because there's gonna be quite a few. I can only imagine, considering that was our first game, I'm just gonna send it. Propose trade, and we accept. Still got a plus five on the first line, except now we have two-way forward, two-way forward, power forward. They all have at least a four and a half star shooting category. Come on, Timo, couldn't have had five. So I doubt you guys are surprised at this point, but I traded the wrong defenseman. Anyway, let's get back to the calendar for hopefully an extended period of time and see, there's no way we get back-to-back -back shutouts. So I'm just gonna send those two games in a row 
And oh my word, the Columbus one was close. I do kind of have a feeling that Jason Robertson was going to absolutely light it up on that first line. Very unfortunate he had to go, but it's part of the video. I think I can sim a few games at a time here. I think we'll have time to stop it before we get two shutouts, you know? There it is. one nothing against the Sabres and an 8-4 win over the Oilers. So just like that, we have to trade either Sebastian... Let's go Chandler! Basically one of these two guys have to go. One for one, just trade to get Robertson back. Imagine that. It probably would work. I could try this one for one. It really helps us out salary wise. The Preds can take on the contract of Sebastian. The only issue I have is that we're losing an X factor. Forsberg for Connor, one for one. I think that the trade value of Connor is a little bit higher, but we could still try it out. Doesn't hurt to try. Proposed trade? No. Yeah, I don't think this will work either, but let's try it out. Nope. And last but not least, I will try getting rid of Gavrikov. And if this doesn't work, then we have to move on. All right. Gensel is a sniper. And on top of that, he has an X factor. We'd be going down one overall again. And then it sort of brings up the question, you know, where do we draw the line? Again here, we would be losing the X factor, but we're getting an 89 overall sniper for the first line in Andrei Svechnikov. I think this could be worth it. The value seems to be there. And they do want Forsberg, which helps it out as well. Let's do it. Proposed trade. And they reject. Not sufficient at all. Okay, hold on. Why did I have to add in the stipulation for no draft picks and prospects? Why'd I do that? Larkin's also 89 overall. He has an X factor. We're losing an ability or two, but that's not the end of the world. He's a playmaker. Maybe we just have to pull the trigger on this one. We're also going down in cap. About two and a half mil, which is pretty solid. Truthfully, it doesn't even look like the value for the one for one will work. And they also don't really have a right-handed defenseman I can bring back to package. So we might have to save that for a future trade and try this one out. One for one, not happening. I mean, we could. The trade value looks to be about the same. He'll put up goals. No doubt about that. I don't think it's even going to work. Proposed trade. No. I'm starting to think we're going to have to go down in overall to make this work. Gabriel Landeskog, he's also 89. Doesn't have an X factor, but does have abilities. Power forward. There is a piece from both sides that teams are willing to give up, but I don't think it's going to work. I could try Forsberg with McNabb for Myers and Thompson. We're losing overall in both players. Losing an X factor as well. It helps us out salary wise. And you know what? I don't even know if this one will go through, but let's go ahead and try it. All right. This is just getting annoying. We're losing an overall, and I still don't think this will go through one for one. A sniper, though. Mika Zibanejad. That could work. We do need a sniper on the first line. Proposed trade. All right. Thank you. Oh, dear. There goes our plus five. Listen, Carter. No more shutouts out of you, all right? We beat the Caps two games in a row. Took a 3-2 L to the Stars. Once again, I'll sim three games at a time. I feel like the odds of getting two shutouts back-to-back are extremely unlikely. So I think I'm fairly safe in doing three games at a time. We're on a bit of a streak here with no shutouts. I don't even care about wins and losses anymore. I just don't want, I don't want us to shut out other teams. A 2-1 game. Oh, there it is. 3-0 against the Seattle Kraken. Forsberg is leading the team with 27 points. Hmm. Was this the same trade that was rejected last time or no? I tried to get a defenseman as part of this as well. I can't be bothered anymore. Proposed trade, one for one. Okay, you won't do it. Proposed trade? Yeah, I didn't think so. But what if I claim takes these backsies? Two abilities, 89 overall, and I don't even know if this one will go through one for one, but I'm gonna try it. They did. Clayton Keller, the newest member of your Tampa Bay Lightning. We more or less have to downgrade at least a little bit every single time, because otherwise the CPU is just not gonna accept the trade. Mostly because the players that we're trying to get aren't on the block. Are you joking? Stop the simulation. That was close, but we had back-to-back -back shutouts. I've got a crazy one for you. Brian Rust will be turning into Anthony Mantha, and then we'll be trying to get Kyle Connor for Clayton Keller. I don't think this will work, but certainly going to give it a shot. Trade rejected. This isn't even going to work, will it? Proposed trade. No, it will not. We'd be going down one overall again. I could bring back Victor Mete, or no, he's left-handed. Okay, so we basically have to go with Victor in this case. And it still won't work. I'm starting to get desperate here. We could just put a 74 overall player on our final defensive pair and get rid of McNabb. Let's try it. Proposed trade. I'm not having fun. TVR 81 overall. 
and Nylander for Clayton Keller. I don't really like it. I don't even know if this will go through, but I'm going to try it. Proposed trade. They did take it. And it did automatically put TVR in there. So that was worth it, I guess. Maybe. Our first line has deteriorated big time. Oh no, that means we won't even have a choice next time. If we get another shutout, Zabenejad's gotta go. No, a 7 nothing win over the Sabres. Are we even close to the trade deadline? Not really. One for one, you won't do it. Proposed trade? Sweeten it just a touch. Okay. I'm gonna try to get rid of McNabb and bring back Nudavara because they do have him on the block. So that might make them a little bit more interested in getting this deal done. Let's go ahead and try it. Propose, and it is not even close now. You know what? I've had it. Just basically take McNabb for free. Who are you? Would this one for one go through? My instinct is telling me no. Yeah, didn't think so. We're basically getting rinsed by me running out of patience. Suzuki, for Zabinijad, one for one. Yep, have fun. Our first line went to a plus three, though. I think it was only a plus two before. Maybe it was a plus three. Anyway. Come on, no more shutouts. Just let them score. If it gets to the point where we're winning and there's a goose egg on the board, just pull the goalie. So far, so good. We're losing more than we're winning, but we're not getting shutouts. So I'm a big fan of that. Back-to-back -back games. That was so close. 4-1 and 5-1. Let's see if we can complete the trifecta here in Western Canada and only allow one goal against the Calgary Flames. Well, no. That is not what happened. The trade deadline's in sight. I see it. 5-1 win. We're going on a bit of a tear here, actually. As I say that, we lose a couple games in a row. Par for the course at this point. We might actually do it. We might actually get to the trade deadline without another shutout. There's two games left. And there's no way we're getting a shutout in both of them. So I'm just going to sim up to the trade deadline. If we do get a shutout, then at the deadline, obviously, we'll have to make a move. Which... I'm down for, because there will probably be players on the block. So let's go ahead and do that. Simulate up to the trade deadline. A 3-1 win and a 7-5-L. I'm going to keep our current trading block. Jump in there just to see who's available and who we could have gotten. Oh, yeah. Sure, now you want to get rid of them. I see how it is. We're second in the division at the moment, and... It's smooth sailing from here on out. I can sim the rest of the season. Wow. Holy crap, win a hockey game. Are we really gonna- <laughs> This is impressive. Finally. What was that? I, I didn't even- There's a shutout. But I need to go back and count how many L's in a row that was. That was ridiculous. Classic EA Sports sim engine, man. So we won three in a row, and then we proceeded to lose five- <laughs> Nine, ten games in a row. And even though we lost ten games in a row, we still had 42 wins. 92 points, which isn't great, but we're in the playoffs. The Mighty Ducks of Anaheim go on to win the President's Trophy. They have JT Miller, Sidney the Kidney, and ADB. Vitek Vanacek in net, and Phoenix Copley to Washington Capitals legends. We finished 12th in the league, and then the Rangers and Jackets. Oh my word, the Metro... Got absolutely rinsed. 16, 17, and 18 made it. I feel like there's got to be one more. Yeah, the Nashville Predators. 20th in the league. 86 points make it into the playoffs. Will Nye, the hockey guy, 81 points. Just shy of point a game. He did play 83 games, but still did very well. Suzuki, 76. Chandler, this guy went off. 70 points. Timo did not do great, honestly. Kata Hat, six shutouts on the year, a 906 save percentage and a 279. Charlie Lindgren just was not it. Spurgeon had 39 points, so that's not too bad, I guess. VTech led the league with 45 Ws, a 910 save percentage. We got a 913 from Kemper, 914 from Anderson and Sorokin. Petrangelo put up a great amount of points. What a spectacular number that is. Dougie Hamilton. 70, Quinn Hughes 67, Connor McDusty almost hit 110, but would stop just shy. 109, 51 goals. It looks like the Rocket Richard is going home with Matthews. The other 100 point breaker is Sydney the Kidney. All right, it's playoff time. We have the New Jersey Devils in round number one. Will we make it out of round number one? Kind of doubt it, but let's see. Sim the first four games. I don't think there's going to be a sweep. There you go. There isn't. And. I mean, there might as well be. Let's just get it over with. Yep. No more. No more trade videos. I'm done with these. The Ducks drafted a super team. Won the President's Trophy and now the Stanley Cup as well. 
pretty good season. Suzuki and Nylander both showed up in the playoffs. Four points in five games. Phil Kessel. Three points. Same with Krejci, Larson. Can't blame Kata. 914, 259. We just didn't get it done offensively, I guess. Vanacek once again. 929 save percentage. Yeah, there's some ridiculous save percentages in the playoffs. There always is. Tori Krug led defenseman. 16 points in 20 games, but EK65 was point a game. He just only played 12. Ryan O'Reilly with the con smite. 27 points in 25 games played. They also had Sydney. 21 points. Four of the top five. In fact, just the top four are all Ducks. Let's just zip through these trophies real quick. Look at that. Three in a row for the Ducks. Connor McDusty with the Art Ross. The heart goes to Matthews. Okay, let's see if we won anything. Although I really doubt it. No, we did not. Oh wait, there's one more, but I know we didn't get that one. There is your playoff tree, a first round exit from the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I feel like we had a really good team until we had to go and make those trades, but that's the whole video. It's the challenge and the fact that we still made playoffs also after losing 10 games post trade deadline. It's fairly impressive. Um, on a side note, if you don't subscribe, your favorite team is going to fold. Sorry, it's just a fact. But anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.